good morning. You guys will stand with us. everybody with us this morning. We are very blessed and thankful to be here. We uh, hope that you uh, make yourself at home, feel free this morning. You worship the way that the Spirit leads you to worship this morning. It'll be perfect and it'll be in order. So uh, you follow the leadership of the Spirit this morning. We are very glad to be here and thankful for this opportunity. Let me announce that next Sunday night uh, at six o'clock here in the Family Life Center, we're going to be having a church-wide Thanksgiving meal. Uh, Evelyn's going to be cooking our turkey and ham and dressing for us and we're asking everybody just kind of bring a side dish or a dessert, uh, that'll be next Sunday night at 6 o'clock, so please make plans to be with us uh, a week from tonight. Uh, I want to thank everyone that prayed for us during our revival this week at Gwen. Uh Those of you that, that passed on messages to us, let us know you're praying. We greatly appreciate that. It's a tremendous help. Uh, had a great week. Uh, the children will be practicing tonight at 5 o'clock, 6 o'clock, what time? 6? Six o'clock. We're practicing tonight at six o'clock, so uh, there'll be no adult services because 
making room and making way for them to practice. So we're glad you're here this morning. We are thankful to get together together and worship and celebrate and uh, step away from the things that's going on in the world and from disappointments, heartaches, whatever it might be. Come into the presence of Christ, give ourselves to Him, and enjoy who He is this morning. So if you will, bow your heads and let us pray. Father, we come together. We thank you for this time together and for the blessings you've given us. Lord, you have provided us with a wonderful opportunity this morning to gather together and to lift up your name and to give you thanks and to give you praise. Father, we pray that your Holy Spirit would fall upon this service, that it would rest upon the hearts, on the minds of the people that are gathered here this morning. Lord, I know that there are burdens that we bring in with us. There's disappointments, there's faults and failures and unrighteousness, Father, that we bring in with us each and every Sunday. Lord, as we step away from that and, and we come into your presence through the power of Christ, through the righteousness of Christ, and through the power of your Holy Spirit. Lord, I pray that you would just bless in a wonderful way, anoint these that lead us in worship. Father, we thank you so much for this time together. In Christ's name we pray, amen. Take just a minute and welcome some folks that you've not welcomed just yet. Right now I'm a total mess and right now I'm completely incomplete But things are gonna change This is redemption story With every step that I'm taking Every day you're chipping away what I don't need And this is me under construction This is my pride being broken And every day I'm closer to who I'm meant to be I'm a change in the name Wish I could give a little more of me without stopping to think twice. Wish I had faith like a little child. Wish I could walk a single mile without tripping on my own feet.
with you this morning. We're glad that uh, you're here and uh, hope that uh, uh, you're ready to worship this morning. And we just wanted to, to do something a little bit different today and just take a, a few minutes to pray before we enter into worship, just to, to set our hearts and our minds on, on the Lord and on uh, who he is and what he's done for us, just so that we can say thank you to him. And, you know, scripture talks a lot of time about waiting on God. And uh, sometimes that is very hard to do when you're waiting on an answer from him. Sometimes that's difficult. But uh, the Bible tells us this, if you ask, I'll answer. If you seek, you'll find. If you knock, the door will be open. And so know this morning as we just come together just to take this opportunity to meet together with other believers, to seek the <laughs> Lord together this morning, uh, that God is here with us. And we don't want to take this opportunity for granted. So if you will, let's, let's bow our heads in prayer. God, we thank you for this morning. God, we thank you for this group of people that are gathered here today. God, who have put their faith and trust in you. God, we thank you that they are becoming uh, not just a group of people we know, God, but they're brothers and sisters in Christ. God, they're becoming our family. God, we thank you for this time together just to all of us to come together in one spot just to meet with you. God, today we just lay aside all of our distractions. God, all of the thoughts of this, this past week. God, the burdens we've been carrying around. God, we just want to find your freedom this morning. We want to find your presence this morning. God, we want you to speak to our hearts. We want you to, God, to just let us know that you're always with us. God, as we sing these songs to you, I pray that our hearts would be true in what we say. And God, that you'd be pleased with what you hear today. In Jesus' name, amen.
guys will stand with us. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, your perfect love is casting out fear. And even when I call in the middle of the storms of this life, I won't turn back, I know you are near, and I will fear no evil, for my God is with me, and if my God is with me, Shall I fear? Who then shall I fear? Sing it out. Oh no, never let go through the calm and through the storm. Oh no, never let go every high and every low. Oh no, you never let go. Lord, you never let go of me. For the heart that holds on A glorious light beyond all compare And there will be an end to these troubles But until that day comes We'll live to know you here on the earth And I will fear no evil For my God is with If my God is with me, whom then shall I fear? Whom then shall I fear? Sing it, oh no, never let go. Through the calm and through the storm, oh no, never let go. Every high and every low, oh no, never let go. Lord, you never let go of me. See a light that is coming for the heart that holds on. There will be an end to these troubles, but until that day comes, still I will praise you. Still I will praise you. I can see a light. Yes, I can see a light that is coming for the heart that holds on. There will be an end. Troubles, but until that day comes, still I will praise you, still I will praise you. We're singing, oh no, you never let go, but through the calm and through the storm, oh no, you never let go, and every high and every low, oh no, you never let go. Lord, you never let go of me. We're singing, oh no, you never let go. Through the calm and through the storm, oh no, you never let go. And every high and every low, oh no, you never let go. Lord, you never let go of me. Never let go of me. Over all the universe, the 
you be the glory. I'm alive because I'm alive in you. It's all because of Jesus I'm alive. It's all because of the blood of Jesus Christ. It covers me and raises dead man's life. It's all because of Jesus I'm Of every breath I breathe, author of all eternity, giver of every perfect thing, to you be the glory, maker of heaven and of earth, no one can comprehend your worth, king over all the universe, to you be the glory. Because I'm alive in you It's all because of Jesus I'm alive It's all because of the blood of Jesus Christ He covers me and raises dead man's life It's all because of Jesus Sunrise sings your praise The universe cries out your praise I'm singing freedom all my days Now that I'm alive It's all because of Jesus I'm alive It's all because of the blood of Jesus Christ It covers me and raises in It's all because of Jesus I'm alive It's all because of the blood of Jesus Christ it covers me and raises dead man's mind It's all because of Jesus I'm alive seated this morning. You know, the scriptures tell us that every good and perfect gift comes from above. So, uh, so truly the life that we have been given, spiritually and physically, the good things that exist within it come from God and from God alone. And uh, we've all got things to celebrate. We've all got reasons to rejoice and reasons to be thankful and reasons to lift our hands and sing out and acknowledge the giver of all those good things. Every one of us do. Um, you know, there's a lot of people who choose not to take that route and uh, just take the good things and never give that response back. Take the good things and never respond back in a, uh, in a godly way or even acknowledge the one that's given the good things. This morning, we're going to take just a minute... Uh, and we're going to talk a little bit about Veterans Day uh, that, that's coming up. There's a passage in the Bible I'm going to read in just a second. It's about honor and uh, it's about giving that that is owed. It essentially, it's what it is, be it taxes, respect, honor, whatever it, may, whatever it is. The passage is about paying that which is owed. And, uh, you know, and all through the Bible, there's, this word of honor comes up, even from the Ten Commandments about honoring mom and daddy. Uh, to Paul's writings about honoring the king, to Christ's writings about the honor to, to give brothers and sisters in Christ. The honor's all through the Bible. The, the question comes up about uh, that we wrestle with is how do you honor somebody? You know, we, a lot of times we just kind of take the word honor and replace it with appreciate in a sense. Uh, you know, we, we say thank you or... You know, we'll put a name on a plaque and put it somewhere to be seen. And 
we often think honoring means to, to not forget, to somehow keep this in our memory and pass it on from one to the next to the next. But honoring really means a lot more than just uh, a simple thank you, or honor means a lot more than passing on the memory of someone or the memory of something that's happened or unfolded in our life. Honor is about understanding what they've done, what this individual has done, what a mother and a father has done. It's about understanding about the price that's been paid from those that have come before us to uh, the ones that are around us today. Honor is about, about embracing what someone has done on your behalf or on the behalf of someone else. And so this morning, I'm going to read you a passage, and we're going to talk just a little bit about this idea of Veterans Day within a spiritual perspective, because that's the best way I know to talk about it, truth be told. Uh, so I want to read you a passage out of Romans. It's uh, Romans 13 and 7, and here's the passage that I was talking about. It says, it says, Pay all of them their dues, taxes to whom taxes are due, revenue to whom revenue is due, respect to whom respect is due, and honor uh, to whom honor is due. And the passage is about... Uh, Paying that which is owed. And, 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 and we know how to pay, repay a lot of things, but when it comes to honor, I think we do get a little confused. And so for just a minute, we're going to take uh, just a little bit of time, and we're going to talk about this, about the honor that we owe our veterans, armed uh, forces, the men and women who serve in our armed forces, and about what that means to us as born-again believers. You know, every day, right now throughout the world, uh, someone who is in service, you know that there's more than one suicide a day from people who are serving in the military right now, all over the world. I mean, the, the rate is, is extremely high. More people in service currently are dying at their own hand than they are from the wars that they're fighting in. And, and if that does anything, it just speaks to the stress that comes along with what they're doing and the price that, that they're, they're having to pay. And, uh, and this stuff doesn't need to go unnoticed by no means. And it certainly deserves more than a day of thank you that we're going to set aside and acknowledge. It deserves more than, than just a round of applause every now and then. Um, it deserves honor is what it deserves. And so as people of faith living in a free country and who partake of many of the freedoms uh, that we've been given, I think it's important that we talk about how to honor and what that means for you, for me and you. You know, in this particular passage, uh, it talks about everything from paying taxes to honor, and it just goes down and down. And Paul is instructing the Christian people to do this, to pay that back, which is owed. You know, freedom, I don't think, has ever been the end goal to any of these conquests or wars or invasions, whatever you want to call them. I don't think freedom's ever been the end goal because freedom within itself doesn't provide the good things that we have. What freedom does provide is the opportunity to have the good things that we have. You know, freedom doesn't within itself provide a democracy, but freedom gives us an opportunity to pursue one. Freedom within itself doesn't provide prosperity, but it does give you an opportunity to prosper. And freedom within itself doesn't provide righteousness, but it does give us an opportunity to seek after the righteous things of God. And if freedom does anything, freedom, the way that I can see it, gives you an opportunity more than anything else. It provides an opportunity. You know, from a, pure, a spiritual perspective, you could almost make the case, if not solidly make the case, that the American soldier has done as much for the gospel of Christ and spreading the gospel of Christ as missionaries have done. Uh, you can say that the American soldier has provided the platform and has provided a free country for the gospel of Christ to, to grow, for it to be developed, and for it to spread throughout the entire world. Uh, it, it, we live in a place of where we gather together every Sunday morning to lift up the name of Christ, to sing about how good God is, and to sing about how great Christ is, and lift our hands and join together. We, we meet Sunday nights, and, and we meet Wednesday nights, and... And if anybody hiccups during the week, we'll meet again. 
Every opportunity we get, we're going to meet. Thanksgiving we'll meet. Christmas time we'll meet. Easter we'll meet. You name it, we'll meet. Even if it isn't things we agree with, we'll create a different reason to meet, but we'll meet. And we have the freedom to do that. We have the freedom. I didn't worry one bit when I got up and got dressed this morning if anybody was going to storm in here and take us out or declare that we couldn't do this or imprison somebody for lifting up their hand bringing their Bible. I didn't have to go to my hiding place to uncover my Bible to bring it with me to church this morning. I didn't have to wonder if I have the scriptures memorized so, the, so nobody will see, see me carrying the Bible like is in a lot of countries. We have a wonderful opportunity to express ourselves in worship in a free way that's been provided to us by the freedom that we have today. And that within itself is an opportunity. The problem is, it seems like we're turning into people who doesn't really appreciate opportunities or even recognize opportunities sometimes. It often seems like we are people who have become so short-sighted that the opportunities that we who do have in front of us, we, we often treat them not as opportunities, but as, as rights, I guess you could say. It's, it's not an opportunity to lift up the name of Christ, where a lot of people can't do that today. It's not an opportunity that has been paid for with a tremendous price so that we can gather together today. But it's, uh, we often think it just hurts me, right? It just hurts me. I'm tired. I'm I've been through a lot. I'm going to sleep in today. Sunday's my only day off. I'm going to sleep in. I'm not going to go. Sunday's the only time I get to do my own thing. I've worked all week long. I'm going to do, I'm going to, well, let me say this. Outside of the idea of what Christ did for us so that we can come and be together, believe it or not, there are people long before you and that you know today that is still paying a tremendous price for you to come gather together and do what we do on this Sunday morning. For you to be able to go home and talk about the things of God and, and share these things. We baptized too this past Sunday night. And while we give God credit for all the good things, there have been some tremendous prices paid for that we could gather together and do this. And so I believe honor goes beyond a simple thank you. I think honor goes beyond an applause. It goes beyond the day that we set aside. I believe honor means taking full advantage of the opportunity that you've been given because of what's been done. I think it means not throwing opportunities away. I can't think of anything more insulting than for the opportunities that we have and to throw them away as if they don't matter to us. Throw them away as if it, it means nothing to us. The opportunity, like I said, to gather and worship and to celebrate Christ and profess our faith out loud profess our faith publicly and talk about how good, how good Jesus is without the fear of incarceration, without the fear of death, or without the fear of torture, or without the fear of any of that has come, at a, has come at a tremendous price. But so many people, they have that opportunity and they don't take it. And that opportunity loses out sometimes to afraid of their neighbor and what their neighbor might think about them instead of what the government might do to them. You know, that opportunity loses out to our favorite television show sometimes on Sunday mornings and, and Sunday nights. Or maybe it loses out to 45 minutes of extra sleep on Sunday morning. So, I, like I said, before we step back and pat our own selves on the back for acknowledging a day for our veterans, maybe we need to try to understand what honor means just a little bit more than just a simple thank you or a simple hand clap. I believe it means receiving fully the opportunities that have been given to us in the, in, in the name of freedom and the things that we have to do. You know, we, we begin as uh, connected as the world is today. You know, you, you can sit anywhere and pull up any country in the world, it seems like, on the Internet, and you can read about their culture and who they are, and we're just flooded with information. We, we tend to think everybody's like us. Is what we tend to think. You know, we tend to think everybody lives in a place like we live in. Well, we think that, uh, that people think about think life the same way we think about life, or they have the same things that we have, or the same opportunities that we have, and, and, and everybody's just got these same decisions to make. But that's not the case at all. Truly, America is truly a blessed country, and there's not a doubt in my mind that God has used America to advance the gospel of Jesus Christ. And I believe that has come have been acquired, the freedom that has allowed that has been acquired by our armed forces, men and women, who put it on the line each and every day. You know, there are countries throughout the world where it is literally illegal to carry a Bible. It's, it's illegal to 
to lift up the name of Jesus. You can't do it without being regarded as uh, a, a heretic or about, without being regarded as you know, somebody who is in apostasy and being cast into prison and, and, and being sentenced to death. And all over the world, these countries exist. Not, not, not every country is like this. Not every country has the freedom that we've been given. Not every country has the opportunity to gather together and worship and to celebrate and to be thankful for the good things that God has given to us. I've, I've got some examples here that I want to show you real quick. One of the examples that I want to go to the next one, if you will, is uh, th this country that's just uh, north of Thailand here, Laos. And it, the idea here is that it's highly illegal for anybody to profess the name of Christ as their Lord and Savior. They're in prison uh, without trials, usually put to death, without uh, any debate, without any questioning, without any arguing. Children turn in parents who convert to Christianity. And uh, on a regular basis, Christians suffer in this country. Do you want to know why? Because it's literally illegal to be a Christian there. And I know that it's hard for us to wrap our minds around. Uh, because we've been, we, we live in a place where that's not illegal, right? We live in a place of where we're free to choose. Where we're free to practice our faith. We're free to lift up the name of Jesus. We're free to do that. And it's hard for us to imagine some of these basic freedoms that we take for granted don't even exist in, parts of the, in other parts of the world. They don't even exist. And it's freedoms that so many people take for granted on Sunday mornings. They take for granted at their workplace. They take for granted everywhere they go. They act as if this is just a God-given freedom. Yeah, even Paul dealt with people that didn't have this freedom. He encouraged people to be content in their slave state in the name of Christ. So they, they, we act as if this stuff exists everywhere. The reality of it is it don't exist everywhere. This has uh, come at a high price. Another country that I want to mention is Somalia. Somalia has 25 million people. Less than 200,000 folks are Christians in that particular country. Uh, on a monthly basis, Christians are put to death in Somalia, either in uh, government-sanctioned courts or renegade courts. But on a regular basis, they meet in closed places under the cover of darkness, they even practice singing silent hymns. Silent hymns of where they hum the words so that nobody can say, I heard you say this. Not because they're ashamed of it. Not because they're, they're uh, ashamed of the name of Jesus. They will be imprisoned, incarcerated, beat, tortured. They'll be put to death for it. it with just a small sect of people who lift up the name of Jesus. Of course, another country is Saudi Arabia. It is literally illegal to practice non-Muslim worship in Saudi Arabia. You can't do it. By the law of the land, you simply can't do it. Al-Shabaab has taken over the lower part of Saudi Arabia and Somalia and have uh, waged war against Christians and guarantee that to wipe out Christians within the state or within the nation. Uh, and it exists everywhere. It takes about five seconds to find these examples. You know, it, they're everywhere. They're everywhere. All over the world, people are fearful to lift up the name of Jesus, yet we get to do it freely every, every week. We get to go to work and talk about Christ. Hey, it might cost a job, maybe. I've never been asked as a pastor to come post bail for somebody because they were a Christian. You know, we get to raise our kids with it. We get to teach our kids the hymns, to sing them out loud. We get to watch them be baptized. Not only do we get to watch them, we get to broadcast it and let family all over the world or all over the nation get to watch it. And we do it without fear. We do it. We do it without fear. But what happens to us as a nation, outside of just the religious part of it, let's just step away from the religious side of it, what happens when we stop seizing the opportunities that have been given to us? What happens when these are no longer opportunities but hassles and trouble and headache and heartache each and every day? And so instead of taking the, the trouble of making the most of an opportunity, we just ignore the opportunity. Isn't that the same as ignoring the people that provided that opportunity? Isn't that the same? I had a teacher in uh, college would always tell me, and I've told you this before, if you can read and don't read, so there's no difference in you being a person that can't read. If you ignore the opportunity, you're simply ignoring the people who provided you that opportunity. 
plain and simple. So honor is more than a thank you. It's more than a, a, a thankful heart. It's more than a round of applause. It's laying hold of the opportunities that's been given to us. And understanding that and, and processing that. The, the poem that I want to read to you, I'm going to uh, give you a quote in just a minute. One of the, uh, go back up. John F. Kennedy had a great uh, quote I'm going to read in just a second. Go back up. Two more. Three more. One more. There we go. And y'all have heard this before, and it's very true. Go back down one. Ta-da! <laughs> See, it's the veteran, not the preacher, who is giving us freedom of religion. It's true. It's the veteran, not the reporter, who has given us freedom of the press. It's the veteran, not the poet, who has given us freedom of speech. It's the veteran, not the campus organizer, who is giving us the freedom to assemble. It's the veteran, not the lawyer, who has given us a right to a fair trial. It is the veteran, not the politician, who has given us the right to vote. You know, the veterans of today and of past have created uh, a very fertile ground for good things to grow. It, they, they've created a very good ground for the cause of Christ to grow. They've created a good fertile ground where people's uh, basic rights can be acknowledged. They've created a good fertile ground for a, an attempt at fairness to where it can be developed and where it can, where it can grow. Once again, freedom within itself doesn't guarantee any of that. It does guarantee an opportunity to pursue those things. What does it say when the pursuit stops, what does it say when the opportunities are shunned and they're walked away from and they're taken for granted day in and day out, day in and day out? I would say for me, one of the, the idea of honoring our veterans for, uh, for Veterans Day, I don't, I don't think it was any of them's mission then or today to go away from their family for 18 months, two years, or more, lay it all on the line, and come back for a thank you. I don't think that was the case at all. I said yesterday, and uh, I was watching, I don't know, Odds Are is ESPN, on TV, and they were showing these, uh, they did a clip, it was probably, it, it was probably 10 minutes long, they did a clip of these mamas and daddies were coming back, and they were surprising their kids and their families, and uh, you know, they were walking into school rooms where their children were sitting, or they would meet them at a ball game. They didn't know they were coming. Or, uh, you know, one, one case during one of the baseball games this past, this past year, one of the Major League Baseball games was a little girl come out and throw out the first pitch in the catcher, and she threw the first pitch to the catcher, and he came out to give her the ball and took his mask off, and it was her dad who had been gone for two years or a year and a half. You know, and they embraced. And, man, I sat there and I cried like a little baby. You know, I mean, I, it's, I, it's maybe the only time I've ever watched ESPN and cried, unless somebody was losing, but that's beside the point. I mean, I, did, I, I sat there and I, and I cried like a little baby, and I'm certain the price that they paid or were willing to pay is for much more than simple thank yous, or I appreciate that. Don't you think it was to acquire or lay hold of the freedom to give you an opportunity to pursue great things? Don't you think it was to give you an opportunity to chase after things you couldn't have? Unless they did that. All over the world today, I've told you, all over the world today, in every, every continent, practically, has places where Christian people have to be quiet. They have to be quiet. We don't have to do that today. And it's, and it's simply because of the freedom that we have and the protection that we have. So I believe to honor it properly and to honor our veterans right, understand the opportunities that you've been given. Don't make light of it. and Don't throw it away. And don't ignore it. I couldn't think of a greater insult than to ignore the opportunities that, have, that you've been given. I want to read you a quote, John F. Kennedy. It's the last one, Eric, if you will. He says this, he says, as we express our attitudes, we must not forget that the highest form of appreciation is not to utter words, but to live by them. I think he's dead on. The highest form of appreciation is not simply a thank you or a pat on the back. The highest form of appreciation is living a life of honor to these that have paid that price. And that just simply means laying hold of the opportunities that they have provided. 
So I am thankful, very much so, uh, that I have friends and I've got family that's in the service and have served from World War II to Vietnam and, 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 and some very close friends that are in service today and are overseas at this very moment. And, and for what it is they're doing is, uh, you know, in my eyes, much more uh, than just something I think you can fix. Listen, we currently still live in the greatest nation on the earth. It's the greatest nation that's ever been in existence. It's the most benevolent country that has ever existed. It is a country that has spread the cause of Christ more than any country on the earth. On the earth, we have, we have missionaries literally, practically in every country on the earth. And you know why we have missionaries in practically every country on the earth? It's because we currently have right at 200,000 service men and women serving in over 150 countries worldwide today. Today. And that has provided us the freedom and the opportunity to gather together and to spread the name of Jesus Christ wherever we go. So you honor the way you feel led to honor. But I will say this, whether you like it or not, you have been given a responsibility to make the most of the opportunities that have been laid at your feet. Now, what you do to that says an awful lot. What you do with that says an awful lot about those who provided you with that opportunity and how you feel about that. So, next Sunday morning is going to roll around, and you're going to have the freedom to get up and go to church to worship. I hope you don't throw that away. I hope you don't make light of that opportunity. I hope you don't take that time for granted. And I certainly hope it doesn't leave out, lose out to 35 or 45 minutes of sleep. Come here and sleep with us. <laughs> I hope it doesn't lose out to, to, to needless, nonchalant things. I hope you cherish it the way it ought to be cherished. And you take time, and by, or by cherishing that, it honors those men and women who provided that. And listen, we, we say this all the time just from the standpoint of what Christ has done for us, right? We're all the time baffled at how people walk away from Jesus after what he's offered them and the price he's paid for them and, and all the good things he has offered up for them and providing for them. All they have to do is just make the most of this opportunity he's given them. They walk away from it Sunday after Sunday after Sunday. Unfortunately, when you look over our land, I'm afraid we are becoming a people who make light of opportunities that have been placed in front of us. There was a time when we probably laid hold of those opportunities. We stood on the platform that freedom provided, and we reached higher than anybody else had ever reached before. We've become so accustomed to that platform, it's not very special anymore, it doesn't feel like for a lot of folks. But we still have these opportunities. We still have these things that are laid out in front of us. So Veterans Day rolls in, and, and it rolls out, and we continue on when uh, Tuesday gets here and Wednesday gets here, and, and this day of set, that day of, that set aside for celebration has come and gone, you still have those opportunities, and you still have the opportunity to honor those people who have done those things. So this morning, we're going to have a word of prayer. We're going to take a minute and acknowledge any veterans that are here. We do have something for them at the 11 o'clock service. Uh, I don't didn't get them here this morning for the early service, but they'll be at the 11 o'clock service. We're going to take just a minute. We're going to recognize those. And then we're going to take a minute, and we're going to pray for these that are currently in our service. We're going to pray for them, and we're going to be thankful for them. Because once again, let me say that God has used the American soldier to advance the gospel of Christ as much as he has used the missionary. He has used them to provide a platform for the gospel to be spread. And we're going to be thankful for that. Bow your heads, let us pray. Father, we thank you for this time together this morning. We thank you for this opportunity that you've given us. Lord, day in and day out, we have opportunities to do more and become more. We have opportunities that so many people around the world do not have. We get to live outside of fear. We get to pursue a relationship with you openly in every aspect of our life. We get to chase after you at, at work. We get to chase after you uh, at school. We get to chase after you in our religious settings. We get to openly declare your name wherever we go. And Father, we're blessed to be able to do that. We're thankful for that. Forgive us of the times of when we, did, we don't do it. Forgive us of the times when we don't acknowledge the opportunity that's there. 
And Lord, we are very thankful for the men and women uh, who lay it all on the line each and, every, each and every day to provide us with this opportunity. We're thankful, Father, for the way of which you've used these men and women for the advancement of your kingdom. And God, I pray that, that we don't make light of the opportunities. I pray that it's never something that becomes old in our life. Lord, I pray that it's never something that, uh, that we don't give a second thought to, but Lord, we take time and we honor these that you've used in such a great way. Thank you so much for your blessings upon us, the gifts that you give to us, the people that you've put around us, and the country that you've allowed us to be born into, to be a part of today. We know that that was simply by your choosing and not ours. And for that, we say thank you this morning. And we ask that you just continue to bless in Christ's name. Amen. Are there any veterans here today, any uh, men and women that served in our armed forces or have served in the past? If you'll stand. I know we have some. I know Nick and David. Are there any others that are with us this morning? Let's thank them for their service. <laughs> Once again, the most prized thing I possess more than anything else in my life is my relationship with Christ more than anything else. I cherish my family. It's right there, right under that. But my relationship with Christ is the thing I cherish more than anything else. And I can live that out here where I'm at without fear. I can live it out without fear and, and not give it a second thought. And let me tell you, I'm going to. I'm going to. This morning, we're going we're gonna to take time and we're going to pray. We're going to pray for the men and women who are currently active and serving, those who are overseas, those who are currently enlisting, those who are going through every bit of this that's answering a call into the military. We're going to lift them up, and we're going to pray that God blesses them, God keeps his hand upon them, and uses him, them as he sees fit. Heath, you want to come back around for me this morning? See the place for us this morning. I want you just to take some time. Take some quiet time and be thankful. Be thankful. You know, Veterans Day may not impact you immediately. You, you may not have had a dad or uh, a brother or somebody along that line to serve, but, but I assure you it has had a direct impact on you and your life and your family. So let's take a minute. Let's bow our heads. You know, in a, in a, in a time of quiet prayer, let's acknowledge the blessings that we've been given. You know, and let's lift up the church throughout the world that does not have the freedom to gather this morning. Let's lift up those mamas and daddies that are being carried away to prison because they're believers in Christ. Let's lift up the pastors that have been jailed recently because they're Christians. Let's lift up missionaries who went out and never came back for the sake of Christ because they went into areas that don't have the freedoms or the opportunities that you and I have got. Let's lift up the church throughout the world and those that are suffering and going through hard times and let's be thankful for the freedom that's been provided for us that we do not live like that.